So you want to be as good looking as Mr. Hackaloy? Then the only way out is to learn article hacking so that you look as cool as I am. So let's go ahead and learn article hacking and penetration testing today from Mr. Hackaloy. And remember kids, before we get started, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them, do you know who is Mr. Hackaloy? Now let's go ahead and put on our thinking hat and let's get started. So right in front of us, we are on Kali Linux. So Kali Linux is going to be our ethical hacking and penetration testing operating system. So it is built entirely for hacking. And the best part of all is you can easily go to Kali.org and be able to select a virtual machine. You can install it onto your mobile device. You're able to run it in your Windows computer, your Mac OS, and so on and so forth. And even best of all, you could even run it on a cloud. So in your first hacking assignment, sorry, I mean your first ethical hacking assignment. So the first thing you do is go ahead and open a browser and you go and browse over into the target website and be able to view what is going on. So in this case, we browse over in the target website and it states to fall and welcome to Vaughn OS version 2. So this is an operating system for us to learn about ethical hacking. So do not use them in production environment. Do not try to target auto production service on the internet else you get caught. And if you get caught, the next thing you know, you go to jail. So right in front of us, it states the following fantastic company website on the server. Go ahead and click on it. And it states the following, just another Bioware company. So the very first thing you do is to view everything about the website and it's vulnerable since 1980s. And we have all these different details. So you browse the website as though you are a user of the site. Okay, so we can click the about, we can click Japs, all right, we can see the different models that's available and we can click onto them. And as we're clicking onto them and you're able to see these changes on the URI part. So we can see that there are changes over onto the number. So this means something. This means a possible injection point and something on the back end, which is a database system that allow us to extract those valuable information. Next up, we can go over to say documentation. And again, we're not saying anything specific over here, but the really interesting part is while I was scrolling my mouse over, I saw some changes and this was really fascinating to me. So when I did a control A selecting all, I'm able to view some really fascinating information where they're hiding some details by using the same font color that is the same color as the background. So that's really a very interesting form of security. Well, I mean, who would have thought? The first thing you would do is to usually to hide those values within the website, but now we're hiding it by using the same font color, so mind blown. And you can see right here, we have the following, all right? Please visit our documentation platform at JABCD0CS on the server. Just log in with guest guest. So we got our first login details, our first credentials. So let's go ahead and select the following. And if I copy this, I do a right click, a copy. So over here, all I gotta do now is paste it over and hit enter on that and see what we get, and nothing. All right, so perhaps we have to remove the JABC. Let's go ahead and hit enter on that, and you can see right here, open document. All right, so if I scroll down further, we got a version for this, so open document version 1.2.7. All right, so we got some really interesting details, and of course, you can easily enter gas, gas, hit enter on that, and we're able to lock right in. So here, we can see all those different details. So this is a form of document management system. So that's quite interesting. And we have all these different files and you can easily click onto them. You clicked in, they show you the information, you can view on the things and you can download the file and so on and so forth. So a lot of different details that we're able to gather by clicking around onto the website and be able to discover some really interesting information. And of course, likewise, as you're clicking onto all these documents, you are constantly monitoring what's happening on the URL tab over here. So we have a view file, PHP ID, all right, the MIME type, application PDF summit, equal download. So all this are really interesting information for us as we are beginning the work of trying to find vulnerabilities and openings so that we can break over into the system. Once we break into the system, we'll be able to do a lot more things. Now, typically when you hit a website, this website will be using some form of content management system. So instead of having to code everything from scratch on your own, why not just use a content management system, like say in the world of WordPress or your Joomla and so on. So all this are commonly used content management system that is 
typically used internally or externally so that they can host and house all this different information and details. So what we want to do then is to scan the website to identify what type of content management system is it running on. So let's go ahead and do just that. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and open up terminal. So on the top left corner, go ahead and click under the terminal emulator. Once you clicked in, this is the place where you go right into the matrix. This is where the cool things happen, all right? So all of these are command line interface so that you can interact with scripts, software, tools to target a website. Okay, so this is where the cool things happen. This is where the cool kids hang out. So what you can do then is go ahead and copy the link that we've gotten from a targeted website. Of course, in the real world, you will have something like loyliangjang.com. So what you can do is you can use the tool like WhatWeb to help us check the website, to look up for the type of possible content management system it's running on. All right, so that's something we can do pretty quickly. Go ahead and enter what web and to paste the target address. So in this case, we have the target of 12168.0214 followed by slash JABC. Go ahead and hit enter on that and let's see what we get. And boom, that's it, done. Let's take a look over here what we got. So we have the following. All right, it's running on Apache 2.4.7. All right, and we have Drupal, which is again another form of content management system that we can target. All right, and we have all these different other details, jQuery, Meta Generator, and so on and so forth. So all this are important information as we're looking out for exploits to target the site. So one of the really important parts is to be able to identify that this is running on Drupal 7. So Drupal 7 means that we can try to find out whether there are any vulnerabilities associated with this software version. And if it does, then we can go ahead and get those exploits to target those vulnerable points. So what do we mean by that? So the first thing you have is a website on the left. So this is the website. And then of course, on the right, you have Mr. Hackaloy. So what Mr. Hackaloy will then do is to be able to go over and target onto the website. And after which, trying to look up for all these different pages. So we want to understand about the structure of the website first. And then after which, we want to figure out what are the different versions that are associated with the website so that we can look out for vulnerabilities and openings to target the website. The next thing we can do is also to scan not just the website itself, but the overall system. The overall system in the sense that here we have HTTP that's open, but do we have other administrative services that could be opened up? Say, for example, you have your secure shell. Do you have also other different web services that are running perhaps on other port numbers? So instead of your typical port 80, perhaps they are running on 8888 or they are running 8080. Or perhaps even they have a backend database system that's running right directly within the same server. And with that, we could even communicate directly to the database system and pull out those usernames, passwords, and all these different views that are stored inside the records. So the first thing we can do is to enter search exploit followed by some of the keywords of the software they were targeting. So in this case, we can look for, say, search exploit Drupal. Hit enter on that, and we have lots of examples here. So here we can see the following. We have things like Drupal Gator 3. All right, this leads to a remote code. So this is from Metasploit. We have Drupal Gator 2, which is a remote code execution. So again, a lot of options that's available for us to target. And we even have like SQL injection that's available. So we can easily pick and choose from all these different exploits that are targeting on specific vulnerabilities that we can go after. And do you remember Open Doc Man? We could also target that too. So what we can do now is go ahead and enter search exploit followed by open doc man. Hit enter on that and see what we get right here. So we have several options. All right, we have, for example, the following of cross-site scripting attacks where we can inject our own script. And we also have SQL injection. We have multiple vulnerabilities on open doc man 1.2.7. We also have other potential exploits that we could use as part of launching our attacks. So over here, Going back to Open Docs Man, we got a very good example of Open Doc Man version 1.2.7. So let's go ahead and target that. So what I'll do now is go ahead and enter the following of search exploit, and we can go ahead and download the exploits that's available or all the information that we can get and gather from there. So in this case, we can enter dash M, right, exploit, slash, in this case, we're targeting the multiple vulnerabilities that's available for us. So I can enter PHP, all right, followed by web apps. And in this case, you can see the following right at the end, we have 32075, all right, so 32075. This is going to be the text file that we'll download. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel on this again. TXT, hit enter on that. Yes, I will go ahead and open right that. 
So now we have copied a file. I can do a cat 32075.txt, hit enter on that, and it will show us ways for us to target the vulnerability. Let's go ahead and take a look over here. Okay, so we have several options, or a couple of options here. The first option is SQL injection in open doc man, and it states the following. If we go over to HTTP, ajax underscore udf.php, we have question mark, query equal one, and at value ODM user, union select version, and then followed by the following of percent 2829, 3456789, that would give us an opportunity to display the version of the MySQL server on the back end. At the same time, we also have a second option of improper access control. All right, so you can see right here, we have the following. The exploitation example below assigns administrative privileges for the current account. Wow, this is really awesome. If you take a look over here, exists due to insufficient validation of allowed action in signup.php script when updating user profile. So this is a fantastic way for us to gain privileges over into open document. Okay, so what we can do now is go ahead and copy the following information. All right, so we have ajax, udf.php, copy the selection, go back over into JBC doc. So in this case, we can paste it right here, okay? And then after that, copy the rest of the payload and paste them over into URI, okay, paste it, Hit enter in three, two, one, boom. Let's see the following right here. We got the information, primary 5.5.47. So we got the validation that there is a vulnerability. Okay, okay, let's take this to the next level and dump out all the passwords in the database. So right here, what we do is use a tool called SQL Map to help us run the attack against the vulnerable entry point. So you can see right here, I've entered the following of SQL Map against a target address. And here we're looking for the entry point of add value, and we're specifying the database of MySQL. All right, so you can see right here. So we want to dump out all the databases within on the backend system. So go ahead and hit enter on this, and let's see what we get. That's it, done. You can see right here, we got a following result. Fetching database names, that's it. We've managed to pull out all the database information, and we want to look out for the entries that will allow us administrative access into the system. Let's go ahead and target the JABCD docs. Now we're switching up the command a little bit. So you can see right here, we're still targeting the add value as our entry point. Now it's specifying the database and we're targeting JABCD0CS dash dash dumb. Hit enter on that and that would help us dump out all of the passwords on the backend system and even begin storing them to say a temporary file. So in this case, we're not going to store them separately. All right. And yes, we want to crack them via dictionary-based attack, specify the default dictionary file, hit enter on that, no common password suffixes, and boom, that's it. We're running the attack right now as you're watching it. So here, starting four processes, and we see the following. That's it, done. We are now having access into all of the data on the back end. So you can see the results right here. We got a following, all right? We have the guess at example.com, and we got a username and a password. And of course, you can see right here, it is being placed in a value, some sort of hash. And likewise, you can see the password administrator for webmin. Likewise, there is some form of hashing that's available here, but we were not able to crack the password. So what we're gonna do now is to jump over onto a separate website to help us run this decrypt. Well, technically it's not really a decrypt, so you have the backend database first. All right, so right here, we have the backend database and we have all these different passwords. They're stored in somewhat of what we call as a hash value. So basically your password over here will then be dropped over into a mathematical algorithm. And from the algorithm, it produces that hash value that you're seeing right here. And as Dacker, what we are doing here is we are going after all these hash values by first supplying all these commonly used passwords or previously exposed passwords, and we drop them into the same mathematical algorithm, right, which produces the unique hash value. And then from that list, we'll be able to look up and say, hey, this is the value right here that matches with the same password that we have. So that's what we call a rainbow table. So all we got to do right now is go over to a website, say like md5online.r, go ahead and paste the hash value right here and go ahead and click on decrypt. And let's see what we get as a password. So once I screw on a little bit, let's see what we got. Oh my goodness, look at that. What mean 1980 is the password. So we can use this to possibly log into the website. Now I jump back over to the website. I enter my username of wetmin and I go ahead and enter web min followed by one nine eight zero click enter and boom we are in 
take a look at the top right corner login as webmin now the question is are we able to remotely control the system maybe they're using the same password across multiple services and of course in no particular sequence you can always start for mmap scan which is a network mapping tool that can help us discover the services on a target system so now let's go ahead and do a scan against the target server and done so you can see the following all right so we could secure shell we could http we even have port 6667 on irc now let's see whether webmin would work when we try to secure shell a session into the target server. So let's say enter SSH for my webmin at 192.168.0.214. Hit enter on that. Let's try the password, all right? One webmin, 1980, hit enter on that, and boom, we're in. That's it. We have full control of the server right now. Let's go ahead and enter. Who am I? We can see we're webmin right here, PWD. Let's do a cat, ATC shadow. Let's see what we get right here. Oh, gosh, we're not able to get a password. What can we do then? Well, this is part where we'll be learning about local privilege escalation. So we want to elevate our privilege so that we can do a lot more things against the target server. And what we can do is enter uname, all right, followed by dash A, and we can see the Linux OS. So in this case, we have 3.13. So we're going to target this and look out for potential exploits that we can use to target the vulnerabilities against this version. So doing a quick search, we can enter Linux 3.13 exploit, and the first result gives us 37292. So overlay FS local privilege escalation. Same thing, I can do search exploit, overlay FS, hit enter on that and see what we get right here. So we have several examples and we are able to see, all right, so in this case, we are looking for the following of 37292. So this is the match that we get. So we're going to download it on a target machine, execute it, and give us root then. Go back to search exploit, enter the following search exploit, All right? Dash M followed by exploit slash Linux slash local, and then followed by slash in this case 37292.c. Hit enter on that and done. We have now downloaded the file. So all I gotta do now is move the file 37292. All right, dot C over to var www.html slash and we save it as 37292.c. Hit enter on that, do a super user do, or enter your password, and that's it done. We have now moved the file so we can serve it from a web server. Now let's go ahead and host this web server by entering sudo systemctl, all right, followed by status apache2.service. Let's see what it's running. So here we can see the following of inactive. So what we can do now is go ahead and start this up. All right, so enter start. And now we've started our web server. Now what we can do is enter ifconfig to look at the IP address of Kali Linux. And with that, we can now go back into the secure shell session that we have and download the file. So all we got to do now is CD over to the temporary directory and download the file from the Kali Linux hacker's address of 182.168.0.182 slash 37292.c. Hit enter on that. Boom. Done. And all we gotta do now is do a compilation, or tree 7292.c, followed by output of say OFS. And then all we gotta do now is do dot slash OFS to execute the file. And I can see right here, who am I? That's it, done. It's game over. I hope you've learned something valuable and insightful in today's tutorial. We went through end to end from beginning of scanning the website all the way to full control of a local privilege escalation of the entire site. So remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest ethical hacking and penetration testing tutorial.